Hey, what's going on guys? Vixen here, back with another Sony Vegas and Photoshop tutorial. So what we're going to be doing today is creating a subscribe button and bell icon lower thirds. This tutorial is pretty easy, it won't take too long, but if you can't be bothered or just don't have the time, there will be a download link below where you can download this template for free. And that will include all of the assets needed to follow the tutorial to make that a bit easier for you. And it'll also contain two 4K green screen renders. So if you'd like, you can skip to the end of the video where I'll show you how to use those green screens and you can just do it that way. So with that said, if you do use these, you do follow the tutorial, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. All those things really appreciated. So without further ado, let's open up Photoshop and jump straight into the tutorial. Okay, so here we are, we're in Photoshop and we're just gonna create a new document. So you can make this any size you want really, whatever size video you use on your channel. But for most people, this is gonna be 1920 by 1080. And then you just wanna make the color profile sRGB and the background color transparent. Then we'll hit create. So perfect, and I'm just gonna zoom in a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create all the different elements we're gonna need later. So we're gonna hit the rectangle tool and make a square, and make this about 500 wide by about 120 tall. Looks good. You change this color to red and we'll just go FF0000. It's solid red. And then we're gonna put some rounded corners on it. 20 looks good. Perfect. Now we're gonna to go to the text tool. And we're just gonna type subscribe. Now we want the font to be Roboto and we want the thickness to be bold and go try 75, see how that looks. Hit the tick, control T to transform that layer. Move it over here. Just using the arrow keys to adjust it. It looks perfect. And now if you do want to use the option where we've got a white rectangle behind, just drag a white rectangle like this, and we'll make this about 800 pixels wide. And then the color changes to white, and we'll make the corners try 30. Drag that below, looks pretty good. Again, just Control T to transform arrows to move it around a bit. Leaving this space here for the bell. So I'm just gonna open up Chrome, and then in Chrome, just search for bell icon. We've got images. And this one here is the official YouTube one. This is what YouTube uses for their bell icon, but really you can use whichever one you like the look of. I'm just gonna right click on this, save image as. I'm just gonna go to my desktop, save this as bell. Perfect. And then I'm just gonna drag this into Photoshop. So drag this in here. You just wanna make this the size of the red subscribe button, about the same size. It's pretty good. Move this over. Perfect. I'm just gonna move that that way a bit. And bring the rectangle in a bit. I'm gonna go back to Google. And we're gonna search cursor PNG. Now again, you can use whichever one you like. Just find one you think looks good. I'm gonna use something like this. We want one with the transparent background. So save image as, I'll just call it cursor PNG. Save it. Again, drag that into Photoshop. And we're gonna make this pretty small. You just wanna make whichever size fits relative to the size of these other assets. So this will be different based on the document size you've picked. But I'm gonna go about 200 high, looks pretty good. Position that right in the middle. And that's pretty much all our assets laid out. So now what we need to do in order to use these in Vegas, we need to export each layer separately as a PNG. So that just means making all of the layers turned off. I'm gonna go file, save as. Then we're just gonna go and make this a PNG. And we'll call this white box, hit okay. Then go to the next layer, cursor, save as, same thing. And just basically do this for all of your layers. And then just go through and then the red subscribe button, just enable the text layer and the red box and this will be one asset. So once you've done that and you've made all these, you've exported all the PNGs, we'll jump over to Vegas. Okay, so here we are, we're in Vegas. 
Now, just before we import those files, we want to make sure that our properties are correct. So you want to make sure the document matches whatever your Photoshop document was. So 1920 by 1080 for me. We're going to make it 60 FPS. So when you click this drop down, you won't see that. So you can just type in 60. The field order set to none progressive scan. And then of course, disable resample down here. The rest just leave it default and hit apply and hit OK. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up File Explorer and then I'm just going to drag all of these elements in. Cursor, subscribe button, bell icon and then the white box is optional if you'd like. I'm just going to put all of these down on their own layers. Cursor and bell. We're going to put the subscribe button at the bottom. We're going to put the cursor at the top and the bell in the middle. Now we're going to be working with the timestamps we've got here over on the left. So in order to make sure yours looks the same as mine, right click on this, hit time format and then hit times and frames. And then extend this to see all of your buttons. If you don't have these two buttons here, the effects and the transform button or track motion rather, just hit this menu over here. Go edit visible button set. Then go and make sure you've enabled track motion and track effects. Hit OK. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit here, just using the timeline bar. I'm going to make the subscribe button seven seconds long. So I'm going to go to about seven seconds. And then to get that exact, just hit your left and right arrow keys and that'll move you one frame at a time. So drag the subscribe button here. And then we're going to go 30 seconds before that. So 6.30, make the bell icon that long. And then for the cursor, we're going to go to five and a half seconds. So five seconds, 30 frames. And then we're going to go to one second and start it off there. So this is just to make the keyframing a bit easier because now we know where we're working with, where the items appear and disappear. So the easy stuff first, we're going to open up the subscribe button and we're going to hit event pan crop, this button here. And we'll make this window a bit bigger. And to make sure that the movements of this cursor here line up with the cursors, the cursor on your main timeline, just hit this button here, sync cursor, to make everything a bit easier later. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to about half a second. So that's 30 frames. You can be exact about this. You don't really have to be. I'm just going to do it like that using arrow keys. And then we're going to, this here, we're going to make a little bit higher. So this box here, we see the F in the middle. That is your screen. So that is this window over here. So by moving this up, the subscribe button is now off the frame. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drag this keyframe over. This is the base keyframe where everything's in the middle. Drag this one over the beginning. And then what we've done here is we've just made a motion from zero seconds to half a second where the subscribe button comes on screen. So if we move this over, see over here on the preview, subscribe button shows up on screen just like that. Make this a bit smoother, right click on this one, hit fast, then right click on this one, hit slow. That'll give you a nice speed ramp. I'm going to close this, I'm going to go to the bell icon and we're going to do the exact same thing. What we're going to do is we want the bell icon to pop up a bit later than the subscribe button. So after doing that, we're just going to drag this, move it along. So, so far we play this back, subscribe button pops up and the bell icon pops up. So that's the easy bit, that's the simple stuff done. And we're also going to put a fade out in the end here for about half a second and fade out here for about half a second. So that's all the easy stuff done. Bell, subscribe button, easy. Now we're gonna do the hard key framing, which we're gonna do with the cursor. So for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the track motion button rather than the event pan crop. So this does look a little bit different. Uh, again, make sure you've got the sync cursor button checked. So it's blue highlighted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow that time scale over on the left on the main timeline rather than the one over here. So at one second, I'm actually going to make this a bit smaller so we can see what is happening over on the preview window, just like that. So we're going to go off screen and we're going to make the scale of this about 200 height. So I'm just looking over here on the left, scale this down to about 200. Now again, these measurements won't be exact depending on what document size you used in Photoshop, but for me, 
200 and something, about that looks good. We're just looking at the relative size of the cursor relative to these buttons. So you can just adjust yours to what looks good. So making that a bit smaller, and then we're gonna set the angle to negative 50, and we're gonna drag this off screen. So you can see as I move this in this main window, the cursor moves in the preview. Drag that off screen, just like that. Then we're gonna go from one second over to two seconds. Again, using the arrow keys. And then now we're gonna move it over the subscribe button. Set the angle to negative 20. So this is just the motion from off the screen to on the screen. That looks pretty good there. And then we're gonna go over here, click on the timeline and then go to 201. And we're just gonna click on the screen. That'll give us another keyframe, a duplicate keyframe, which I'll zoom in so you can see a bit better. So we've got two seconds, we've got the main one, then the next frame here. We're gonna right click, set this to hold, and then we're gonna set these over here again to fast and set this one to slow so it's smooth. And then we've got a hold keyframe just to maintain it. Then we're gonna to go to two seconds, 20. Just like that, 220. And then we're gonna make the scale a little bit smaller. Keep note of what the scale was originally. So mine's about 220. And I'm gonna scale it in a bit. This is just a click animation we're creating here. And then we're gonna go another 20 frames to 240. And then we're gonna bring the size back up to what it was before, so about 220, that looks good. Then we're gonna go over to three seconds, drag this out a bit more, three second mark, and we wanna create another keyframe, so just click once, and then it'll create a duplicate. Right click on this, now we want this to be fast. And then we're gonna to go to three seconds 30, or three and a half seconds. And then we're gonna move this over to the bell. Now this is, a bit hard to keep track of, so I will put all of these timestamps in the description and then you can just follow them that way. It might be a bit easier than listening to me. And then we want to go to 3 seconds 40. So just like that. And then we're going to make this duplicate again. Now we're going to go back to hold. And then this one back here we want to be smooth. So what we're doing really is we're doing fast to smooth as in the move transitions. And then the click animations are a hold, click in, click out. Another smooth transition from fast to smooth over to the bell, and then a click and a hold. Or rather slow rather than smooth, my apologies. So now we'll do another click and we'll go 350. Lower the scale a little bit again. Then go a little bit more, go up to four seconds. like that bring the scale back up just to what it was before about 220 perfect and then that is us done for the keyframing for this so what we've done here is we've just done the transition click another transition another click that's perfect we can close this now and we're gonna add a fade over here about half a second so just to check this is all works check we've all done it correctly we'll play this through here subscribe bell click move click and then fade out and then those two fade out perfect so that is it that's all the hard work done that's pretty much the effect but now of course you want to make this a green screen for use in all your other videos so we're going to go over to the media generators tab over here and then hit the drop down we'll go to vegas so the first party stuff and then we're going to go solid color green for green screen obviously and then just leave that as it is default settings drag it to this size and then there you go you've created your green screen now obviously you want to render this we're going to go file render as and then for most people we're going to be working with mp4 so we're going to go magix hevc mp4 internet 1080p 60 fps name this whatever you like export it wherever you like and then hit render so once you've rendered that through, we're gonna open up File Explorer, just like this, and then we're gonna drag this in onto the timeline, down at the bottom. Just hit no when this window pops up. Now, whatever footage you've got, whatever gameplay, video, whatever it is, just put it on the layers below this green screen. So here we can see we've imported the green screen, that's our render. We wanna still wanna get rid of this green. Just hit the effects button over here. Then again, go to Vegas, first party ones. Go to Vegas, chroma key. 
hit add, hit okay. Then hit the drop down for the presets, hit green screen, leave these settings as is. And there you go, the green has been removed. This for me, there's no layers below it, so we just see a black background. But whatever footage you've got, put on the layers below and it'll show up there. And that's pretty much it guys. That is the tutorial on how to create a subscribe button and bell icon lower third. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Hopefully this tutorial did help you. Remember there is a free download link below if you want to download the pre-existing 4K 60fps render that I made. Or if you want to follow the tutorial, the timestamps and other assets will be in the description below to follow this tutorial along with me. So if you did enjoy to use this template, please consider subscribing and liking the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I will try to get back to all of you and help you out best I can. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.